out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just hear what I heard? You can win $1 million simply by correctly guessing the exact number of Mountain Dew bottles that show up in a commercial. Be the first to count and tweet the exact number of Mountain Dew major melon bottles showing in this commercial and you can win a million dollars. It's Joseph from RoboFlow, and tonight I was watching the Super Bowl when suddenly John Cena comes riding across in a funny looking car in a 30 second ad where Mountain Dew says, if you can tweet at them the exact number of Mountain Dew bottles that show up in the commercial, you can win $1 million. Now, when I heard that, and I heard that we're counting and looking for things visually, I immediately knew I should use computer vision to have an unfair advantage over my peers. And so that's what I did. I ended up taking that commercial, I trained a model to recognize Mountain Dew bottles, and now I have a leg up over the competition in spotting and counting these, bo these bottles in my final guess. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can do the exact same, including providing all of the resources in the data set so that you can also have a leg up and beat me, maybe, in guessing the exact number of Mountain Dew bottles that show up in this commercial. Now, before I show you what I did, let me say, let's all start with a common understanding and watch the ad. So we all see all the different places the Mountain Dew bottles appear. Roll the ad. First to count and tweet the exact number of Mountain Dew major melon bottles shown in this commercial and you can win a million dollars. Okay, so you can tell that Mountain Dew bottles are all over the place. They're flying out of the trunk. He's drinking really obviously from one at the beginning. They're in the background on the buildings. They're on the roller coaster. It's going to be hard to find all of these and we're probably going to miss one. But now, let me show you a small excerpt from the final video of what I used when I trained my model on the same commercial. Let me roll just a small part of that clip here. So as you can tell, there's not sound, but you can see all the places the model's finding these Mountain Dew bottles. So naturally the question becomes, how can you do this too? How can you train a model to recognize Mountain Dew bottles and create a competitive advantage so you're more likely to win the $1 million prize? Okay, so first things first, we need the actual video file so that we can have the images from the video to train our model, right? So I actually have the ad ready right here on my computer, <laughs> driving through, watching the fun stuff happening. and. With this video file, what we're going to do is turn it into individual images. And with those individual images, we will label them with annotations, bounding boxes that teach uh, ultimately, which will teach a model how to recognize bottles. Once we have the images and we've labeled them, we can then train a model. And then once we have the trained model, we'll run the original video back through that first model to produce an output like I showed. Now throughout this, I'm gonna make all the resources that I use totally available. The data set, the annotations, all that sort of stuff. But I'm gonna walk you through step by step what I did to solve this problem. Okay, so first things first, I went over to RoboFlow, um, which if you're unfamiliar is a free service. Uh, getting started is free for creating computer vision models. And I created a data set. So I'll call this Mountain Dew um, Commercial. It's an object detection data set. And I labeled all the bottles. I'll create this data set. Now I need to select files. And in this case, the file that I want to select is that Mountain Dew Commercial. So this Mountain Dew Commercial pops up and it's a video. So I have an option to turn this video into individual frames. So I'm going to do uh, three frames per second. And now this converts the video into individual images. And when I have the individual images, I can then label the Mountain Dew bottles, which is gonna be key 
so that I can teach my model what Mountain Dew bottles are going to look like. Not only that, but having the individual frames themselves is also a competitive advantage, right? Because I can kind of slow down the video and look frame by frame by frame if I missed anything or if there's things that I should look for. Okay, so now I took that 30 second clip. It was a 30 uh, second uh, Super Bowl spot and uh, that turns into roughly 90 images. And I can go in here and I can have a look and I can see, okay, you know, there's a, there's a bottle here, a bottle here. So I can go in here and I can label some of these images. Uh, and I'm gonna call this, I'm just gonna call it bottle. And so I would go through and I would label them and it would be really important that I label every single bottle in each of my images. And as you can tell here, it's actually not that easy. There's these bottles here, which are actually hard to see as well. But you know, you're in luck because I can use a little movie magic and speed up my process here so that you don't have to wait for me to finish labeling all this live. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the part where I finished labeling uh, this given data set and have it already uploaded in RoboFlow. Okay, so okay, so my data set has finished uploading and I labeled all of the images. I actually enlisted the help of a friend. Let's have a look at some of these images just to have an idea of what it is we are looking for in our images. So here's uh, actually an image that doesn't have any bottles in it. I can go to the next one. This one was a tough one, right? There's all these bottles across the top. There's a bottle in this whack-a-mole game. There's a bottle over here. And what's important here is notice that the bottles don't even always look the same. These ones are really tricky. They're reflections in his glasses. These ones, the bottles look at different angles. There's this small one here. Sometimes they're pink, sometimes they're clear, and they're all over the place, right? And so with all these different bottles, uh, I can actually look and see you know, how many I ultimately labeled. So in these 91 images, there were 704 annotations, approximately 7.7 .7 bottles per class. Um, and you know they were all over the place in, in, in the data set. And so with this data uh, all cleaned and ready, the next thing that I want to do is make sure that I can train a model that will be able to identify and learn and understand what a bottle looks like. Once I have a trained model, I'm gonna pass my original video file back through the model and then it's gonna show me places that I might have missed. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you the output so that you can also see the results of this given model, okay? And then I'm also gonna link in the description where you can find this data set so you can actually have a head start and not have to relabel everything yourself. Now, it's important that before I actually create my model, I can actually make it so that my images here count for more, if you will. So um, that's actually what I did, is I'm gonna add a series of augmentation steps and then generate that version of the data set, just like generate here. Now I've actually already done that in this version here, where I added 10 augmentations per image, meaning one input image became 10 output images with flips, rotations, shearing, all these sorts of distortions that increase the size of my data set. So what do I mean by that? Now my data set is 100, 810 images and the images have all been sort of like messed up a little bit. See this one's been like skewed and sheared um, ever so slightly. This one's been made brighter and it's a little bit more washed out. And these sorts of things are gonna make it so that the model is gonna learn uh, a little bit better um, and uh, basically learn what bottles look like and generalize more successfully. Now, once I have that given version of the data set, I can kick off a training job with my images. So you see over here that when I have an image, uh, when I have this version that I've created, I can click use RoboFlow train. And when I click use RoboFlow train, that then trains a computer vision model with a single click to understand what these bottles are gonna look like. Now notice that when I train this model, I can start from scratch or start from a checkpoint. Now it's probably gonna make most sense to start from a checkpoint. And in this case, I'm gonna start from the COCO data set. So I could go ahead here and click start training and then I'll get an email when it finishes training. Now I actually already went ahead and kicked off training and my model finished over here. So when the model finished training, I had these scores for how the model did. 100% is the best in each of these categories for mean average precision, for precision itself, and for recall. 
I'll put a link in the description of understanding each of these things. But what I really want to know is I want to review some of my inference examples. So I'm going to click review inference examples. And this pulls up my test set uh, of two images, okay? And in my test set here, what I'm looking for is, did my model do a good job of finding the ground truth label? So here, this is the ground truth tab, right? Ground truth. These are the annotations that we created or that I created uh, on this image. Then I click model predictions. And hey, what do you know? The model's doing a pretty decent job. I mean, there's clearly some spots in here where it struggles with some of those clear ones. But again, we should think about our model like an eye spy where the model is finding the bottles that we may have otherwise missed. In fact, if I look at this other image, what was amazing is that the ground truth, I have each of these ones labeled, and then the model predictions do a pretty good job of exposing the ones that I may have missed. Now you'll notice the model isn't perfect, right? It missed this one here. Um, and you know, that's kind of to be expected, but in general, the model is probably gonna expose places that we may have missed in our counting. Now, just as I mentioned, I went ahead and made this data set publicly available uh, so that you can use this same data set. All you have to do is click fork right up here. And when you click fork, it'll add this data set to your account for free. And you'll have the frame by frames and each of the individual annotations. Now, before I show you the resulting full video, Let's talk about some of the rules that Mountain Dew put in place, okay? So Mountain Dew, when they released the, the way to submit on their Twitter, they said, you know, tweet at us the exact number, the first one to do so wins a million dollars. And they put the video here. If you go and visit the official rules, which I'll also link, there's some important things in here. Like you can only submit three times and you don't wanna count the bottle um, in each of the individual frames. You wanna count each unique bottle, in other words, if you found a bottle that was, we'll say, the one that John Cena is drinking from, that only counts for one bottle, even though you might see it in different times throughout the commercial, which means that computer vision helps us to see all the bottles we might have missed, but we still need to go in and as humans think about, okay, which bottles have I already included, and which bottles haven't I included? Okay, so I've teased you enough. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the resulting, the resulting, model that gets trained uh, or that was trained and then runs back through the original video. Now there's no sound here so it actually makes it a little bit easier to focus on the visuals um, and all right shut up Joseph just run the clip. Have a look. Okay, wow. I mean, that was a lot of stimulation, right? The boxes are bouncing all over the place, but feel free to pause the video, look at each of the individual frames. I bet that you're going to see bounding boxes and bottles that you might have otherwise missed. Okay, so that's it. We went from end to end to tackle a problem to win $1 million. Now, of course, you should like and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ding the bell so that you can be the first to get top tips like this in the future. It's not every day that a YouTube channel shows you a tip to win a million dollars in a contest. Now, please add any comments of other suggestions that you have, or maybe even tell us how many that you submitted in your tweet, because as long as you tweet it, then that number accounts for you uh, and no one else. It's the first to find that number gets it right, and Mountain Dew will pick the winner. I can't wait to see what you come up with and Find all the links in the description for the data set and more. Good luck, but not too much luck.